And now, the Android Basics segment. This is a segment where we discuss the things that power your device from behind the scenes. And now, here's this week's episode, Android Basics. We now move on to our next segment, and that's the Android Basics. And today we're talking about returning to the Samsung One UI. And John brings us a preview of the app section and all that app management. John? Hello. Welcome back to our continuing series on Samsung One UI. It's been a little while, but it's time to jump back into it. Today we'll be covering the apps portion of the settings. Apps. Default apps, app settings. Opening it up. Apps. Navigate up. Button. Apps. Along the top here we have... Search apps. Button. And this is how you can search the list of apps that is below, which we will get to later. More options. Button. Here is the more options. Opening it up. Pop-up window. Permission manager. The permission manager... We've covered previously, but I'm just going to remind you what it is. Permission Manager. Navigate up. Button. It's just a list of all the types of permissions you can grant to apps like camera, microphone, etc. Calendar. 13 of 31 apps allowed. Call logs. 22 of 31 apps allowed. So those are just a couple of examples, but we've covered this previously, so I'm going to back out. Apps. More options. Button. Pop-up window. Permission manager. After permission manager, we have... Special access. And this is the more intense, I guess you could call it, more intense permissions. Special access. Navigate up. Button. And this list isn't too long. I will just go through it and... Maybe add my comments on a few of them. All files access. So this will let you access all the files on a phone. So if you have a app that's a file manager or something like that, and it needs permission to access more than just a specific folder. Connected personal and work apps. Device admin apps. Appear on top. This will let apps appear over other apps. Do not disturb permission. This allows them to turn on and off. Do not disturb. Manage media. I'll just continue to go through here. Change system settings. Notification access. Picture in picture. Use premium text message services. Apps that can always use data. Install unknown apps. This just means let it install APKs that are not from the Play Store. Alarms and reminders. Usage data access. This lets apps see how often you use other apps and when you are using other apps. VR helper services. Wi-Fi control. Turn screen on. Full screen alerts. So this is for like phone apps that will have a notification take up the whole screen. And that's the end of this list. I'm just going to go in here to show you what it's like. Full screen alerts. Navigate up. Button. Allow apps to send full screen alerts that cover the entire screen. So that's the definition of the permission. And then below is just the list of apps and whether or not the permission is enabled for them. So you can go in here and adjust them accordingly. Backing out. Special access. Full screen alerts. Backing out again. Apps. More options. Button. Now we have one more item in here. Pop-up window. Permission manager. Special access. Reset app preferences. Reset app preferences. And I'm just going to Let it explain to you what it is. This will reset all your preferences for Disabled apps Notification restrictions for apps Default apps Background data restrictions for apps Permission restrictions You won't lose your existing app data Cancel Button 
I'm just going to hit cancel. Apps. More options. Button. So then the first thing on this page below the header is... Choose default apps. Choose which apps to use for making calls, sending messages, going to websites, and more. Going in here. Default apps. Navigate up. Button. And here are the options you have. Default apps. Browser app. Chrome. It's where you could change your browser app. Color ID and spam app. None. I won't repeat all these things. I'll just go through them. Digital assistant app. Google. Home app. Nova launcher. Phone app. Phone. SMS app. Messages. Opening links. Here's where you can choose which links open in their respective apps. So, for example, if you want a YouTube link to open in the YouTube app, or if you would prefer it just open Chrome or whatever your default browser is, you would go here and turn it off. So I'm going to show you what this is. Apps that can open links. Navigate up. Button. There's one setting up here. Open links and apps. Open links and apps even if they're not installed on. Switch. So that's the setting you could toggle on and off. Instant apps. Going in here. Google Play Instant. Navigate up. Button. We just have the one switch. Upgrade web links. Web links may open in instant apps instead of in a browser when available off. Switch. Backing out. Apps that can open links. Instant apps. And below this instant apps, we have... Installed apps. Heading. A list of all the installed apps that we can change the setting for. So as an example, I'll just use YouTube. I'll go all the way down to the bottom. Firefox. What's... What's... Zoom. In this app. YouTube Music. YouTube. In this app. Here we have YouTube. If you open it... Set as default. Navigate up. Button. You have a switch. Open supported links. On. Switch. So this is globally where you could turn it on. And then below... Supported web addresses. If you go in here, you can choose which ones will open. Supported web addresses. Navigate up. Button. So for example, the ones I have here... Udo.b and YouTube.com YouTube.com www.youtube.com Backing out of here. Set as default. Supported web addresses. Backing out again. Apps that can open links. YouTube. In this app. And one more time. Default apps. Navigate up. Button. So we're back on the default apps page. And below the opening links, we have... Default for work. Heading. And this is where you can choose a different browser if you want to while you're using your work profile. Browser app. Samsung Internet. I have that set to Samsung Internet, although I don't use my work profile on here. But you can do that if you want to. Backing out. Apps. Navigate up. Button. Below default apps, we have... Samsung app settings. The Samsung app settings. Samsung app settings. Navigate up. Button. And this is a very long list of all of the Samsung apps you have on your device. It's just another way to get to their settings. You can obviously get to their settings from within these apps, but I'm just going to, for example... Camera. 410 kilobyte. If we go in here... Camera settings. Navigate up. Button. Intelligent features. Heading. This is just the camera settings that you can get to from within the camera. So backing out. Samsung app settings. Camera, 410 kilobyte. Backing out again. Apps, Samsung app settings. And below this, we have the list of all the apps on your device. Your apps 314. So if you want to scroll through this list to get to one of these apps, you can. If you'd rather search for it, you can. There's a search button at the top of the screen that I mentioned earlier. And what this will do is when you select an app here, it's going to take you to the app info page. And it, this is not the only way to get to the app info page. You can also get to it by long pressing on an app on your home screen or app drawer and selecting app info from there. 
or you can get to it from the recent screen in some versions of Android. If you have the app open there, I'm just going to open one to show you what type of settings are in here. Gmail, 232 megabyte. App info, navigate up, button. Here are an example of some options we have. Privacy, heading, notifications, allowed. Notifications, when you go in here. App notifications, navigate up, button. These are all the same type of settings that we've covered previously in the notifications segment of this series. The one thing I want to point out, because it's something that's changed since that recording, is at the very bottom. Notification categories. There's something called notification categories. And in One UI 6.1, this is turned off by default. This does not show up here. And this is something that I use and a lot of people use. So if you want to add this option back here, you have to go into the main settings page, notifications, then advanced settings, and you'll see a setting where you could turn on notification categories. That, that'll show up here. But like I said, we've already covered everything on this page. So backing out. App info. Notifications. Allowed. Next we have. Permissions. Calendar, camera, contacts, microphone, notifications, and phone. Again, another way to see all the permissions this app might want and whether or not you've granted it. Screen time. Where you can limit how often this app can be used. Remove permissions if app is unused. On. Switch. If you have this on and you don't use the app for a very long time, it will ungrant the permissions and you'll have to regrant them. So whether or not you want that on or off is up to you. Defaults. Heading. Set as default in this app. Again, we've covered this previously. <laughs> you'll, you'll notice a lot of things in Android you can get to in different places. Language. System default. Usage. Heading. Mobile data. 13.94 megabyte use since April 1st. Going into mobile data. Application data usage. Navigate up. Button. And this will show you how much data this is used. And there's two switches at the bottom here. Allow background data usage. On. Switch. So, so whether or not you want it to use your data while you're not actually in the app. Allow data usage while data saver is on. Off switch. And then if you want it to be an exception to data saver. Backing out. App info. Mobile data. 13.94 megabyte use since April 1st. Next. Battery. 0% use since last fully charged. And here's some battery settings. Battery. Navigate up. Button. We have three settings here. Not selected. Radio button. Unrestricted. Allow this app to use battery in the background without restrictions. This may reduce your battery life. Then we have... Selected. Radio button. Optimized. Optimized based on your usage of this app. Recommended for most apps. It's important to note here that when you do select this optimized setting, this hands it off to the Samsung battery settings that we covered earlier as to whether or not apps are sleeping apps, deep sleeping apps, never sleeping apps, and so on. And then the last option on this page. Not selected. Radio button. Restricted. Restrict battery usage while this app is running in the background. The app may not work as expected and notifications may be delayed. All right, backing out. App info. Battery. 0% use since last fully charged. Next we have storage, 320 megabytes used in internal storage. And then if we go in here, storage, navigate up, button. We can get more information about the storage, but more importantly, at the bottom, there's two options. Clear data, button. This is how you would clear all of the data for the app. Clear cache, button. And that's where you would clear the cache for the app. Backing out. App info. 
storage. 320 megabytes used in internal storage. Next. Picture in picture. Allowed. That's pretty self-explanatory. Install unknown apps. Not allowed. As I mentioned earlier, this is whether or not you want this app to be able to install APKs. App details and store. App downloaded from Google Play Store. And here is where you can double tap to have it take you to the Play Store listing for this app. Version April 14, 2024.62546941.8. Release. And that's the version number. And then at the bottom, there are a few buttons across that you can interact with. Open. Button. You can open the app. Disable. Button. You can disable the app. The reason this is disable and not uninstall is because it's a system app. If it was just an app I downloaded from the Play Store, this would be an uninstall option. Force stop. Button. And then you have the option to force stop the app if you need to. And that brings us to the end of the coverage of the apps portion of Samsung's One UI settings. Thanks for listening. I will send it back to the crew. Yeah, so let's talk about the uh, this segment of the Samsung One UI. Uh, I, I like a lot of things in here. You know, the uh, app manager, for example, is another feature in there that I really like. But John, what's it with that woman you got uh, reading your stuff? I don't think I like that woman too much. Uh, who is she? Uh, did Ashley, who you know who this woman was? <laughs> she is the default <laughs> Samsung TTS voice. So I, you know, it's Samsung theme. So why not? Yeah, but is that like the uh, highest quality though? I thought that this one didn't sound as good as some of the ones that you had. I, I was wondering if you got a different TTS, to be honest. Or maybe I got a lot of fluff in my ear. Maybe. <laughs> That's what happened, but I wasn't kind of liking that voice. What's going on? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll have to check. I think it's the same voice I've been using, but I don't know. Your ears probably work better than mine at distinguishing <laughs> TTS. Uh, yeah, it just it like it sounded different from the one that you had before. Like the quality is not as good because I know it. You know, you could have those uh, higher qualities also, but. This one just didn't sound right for some reason. But the main focus, though, is the content. And uh, there's so much in here. But for me, that app management is something that I like. Of course, the other thing, though, that you've pointed out, John, is the fact that there's so many different ways of getting to these things. And that's one of the beauty uh, that we have in Android because it's like Windows always constantly reminding me of Windows. You know, there may be two or three different ways of doing a, a particular task. And so I, I really like that thing about Android. So it's all over the place. And um, there's uh, talking about Samsung. Um, I, I think we got an email from someone that was talking about Samsung changing the voice input from where it used to be. And Samsung seems to be kind of like consistent because if you look at their, you know, open settings in the uh, quick panel or quick uh, settings area, that open settings is always there at the top, you know, versus Google that used to have it there, then they moved it to the bottom. So Samsung's kind of been uh, more consistent and I'm surprised that uh, they would change uh, the voice input on their uh, keyboard with the 6.1. I was noticing that too. Did you guys notice that? That instead of being there above the uh, number six area, it's kind of moved to the bottom. That's unlike Samsung, isn't it? You know, uh, also the change keyboard input button is also changed from right to left. As, at least it's the case for me from S23. It used to be in the right bottom, and now it's a left. Yeah, so that's what I'm kind of surprised about because, you know, something's kind of consistent in some things. But, uh, of course, we've seen how they kind of broke that other notification thing and now having that notification category. Uh, so making it harder for people to change notifications from within an app. Uh, so 
I don't know. It, it's just like some boys or gals in there, you know, having fun. Let's just change things around and throw people into a tizzy or whatever the case may be. I, I think that's how I see this. They've got to do something while they're doing nothing. You know, earn their paychecks. Exactly, because if you're not working on something, uh, you know, the boss may say, hey, what's going on? You guys having too much fun here, nothing going on. What's going on, you know? So we've got to change things around. And that reminds me so much of Google. Google does this all the time. Uh, you're bound to see that um, regrouping of uh, apps or, you know, features within the settings and, and things like that. But like we've always said, the good thing is that there's always more than one way of doing things. Is there anything else that, you know, kind of strikes you guys out of this area in the uh, app settings? So the ability to select the default app for each thing, like for goals, for the launcher and the other stuff, it's something great on Android. It's not there on iOS. I think that they started something similar, um, but it's not in everything. I think that now it's possible to change the keyboard, isn't it? I think that. But I don't think that it's possible to change the phone app, for example, or the messaging app. So I think that we are still um, like be, be beyond them in that. We are still um, leading. And this is great, the ability to, to change the default apps. It's something that was on Android since a long time, and it's still a great thing, really. And it, it gives a lot of possibilities and the freedom of choice. That freedom of choice is always important, isn't it? Because uh, if I don't like the way a certain app behaves as a default, I want to choose something else. And web browsers, I'm looking at you. You know, if I don't like how you manage my stuff, then I need to choose something else. And I think on the fruit belt, you can change your... Uh, web browser too, even though it used to be that even if you change it, you know, the uh, underlining thing is still the Safari or whatever the case is. But anyway, um, Android is so easy and I love that ease of use and the fact that we could choose what we want. And like John demonstrated, you know, say you're in an app, for example, you could choose to have something else open a link from within that app instead of uh, the default app opening it. So if you don't like how the app opens it with the app or whatever, you want your browser to open that thing instead, you could set that in there. And I, you can't get any better than that. I think that's one of the things that we enjoy here uh, in Android land. So here's a little breakthrough. I wonder what browsers do you guys use? Because uh, I'm using want... Microsoft Edge uh, as a default browser on my phone. Are you use edge as a default on your phone so yeah. you know i i am kind of a notorious for using different ones uh, frankly so i i use the samsung internet now and then then i use the google chrome i use the firefox and i also use the microsoft edge um, so it really depends on what i'm trying to work on sometimes but i think a lot of times i use chrome but then uh, mm -hmm. Some days you will find me using Samsung Internet, and other days uh, I'm a Firefox man. Yeah, I'm. I use Samsung Internet. So I use Samsung Internet when I'm opening a browser, right? Like that's the browser I open when I want to go to a website and do something. But I have Chrome s still set as my default, so I use I use them both. Chrome is just the one that opens when I click on a link, but Samsung is the one that I go to when I want to like get to one of my bookmarks or want to go to a specific website. So if I, when I manually open a browser, I choose Samsung internet. What about you, Curry? Well, for me, Chrome is the default and I use it most of, most of the time, but I have Firefox and Kiwi. I use them from time to time, but what made me um, annoyed when I used Firefox the last time, it was maybe a week ago or something, two weeks ago, it was that Explore by Touch, at least with G Show, it wasn't working well. And I use Explore by Touch sometimes. So I think that it may be leaving my device soon if this problem persists, <laughs> but it's a good <laughs> browser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you sure it's not the confused screen reader, uh, my dear? 
Well, to be fair, I didn't quite <laughs> <must> talk back. <laughs> so, so let's say anything until I try. <laughs> But, it doesn't know, yeah. really matter what's causing it. Be- what matters is that she's not going to get rid of Dishwo before she gets rid of Firefox. That's right. so, <laughs> even if yeah, exactly. it's only an issue with Dishwo, that- bye-bye Firefox. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so exactly. It, isn't that that's very interesting? But yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Kiwi. I haven't used Kiwi in a while, but another one that I use from time to time too is that Vivaldi. Um, I really like Vivaldi, so it's. Uh, I use it too once in a while. So I think all in all, I probably have about, you know, six, seven or eight browsers, you know, that I use interchangeably. So it's kind of very interesting how we all use uh, browsers differently. And for me, I think there's always something different about each of them that, you know, makes it stand out from the crowd and all of that. And um, even though they're mainly based on that Chromium, lots of them, with the exception of Firefox, all of them are based on Chromium. But uh, there's always something in there. For example, uh, Sally used that Microsoft Edge. I think there's, uh, I like the reading mode on, on the Microsoft Edge browser. So it, it's just, there's always something about one that makes it uh, compelling for one to try it. I use Chrome and Tor both because if I need a like a easy VPN solution, then I can use Tor. But uh, Chrome is the only browser that I mainly use. Yeah, we, we talked about Tor on here. I, I haven't even used Tor in a long time, but it's there on my phone. It's kind of interesting. So it's like we were talking offline. John, you are mentioning archiving apps that one doesn't use. So I think my tour probably has gone into hibernation because I haven't used it in a while. 